What's up guys, back with a new educational video and this week we are talking about the effect of diet on health. Many of you know I'm not for demonization of individual foods. In fact, when you look at the data, it just, the evidence just isn't very strong that individual foods or macronutrients or nutrients cause certain morbidities when you start equating for things like calories and lifestyle and that sort of thing. And this is caused me over the years to kind of develop a very flexible approach to nutrition. Um, I, you know, kind of get enough protein in, carbohydrates and fats, you can kind of distribute how you want in terms of your overall calorie goals and make sure you eat enough fiber. And then, you know, if you're worried about micronutrients, track them or take a multivitamin. A lot of people criticize me for that. They say, well, you know, energy balance is fine for, uh, you know, weight loss or, or muscle gain, but that doesn't say anything about health. You know, I, I'm looking to be as healthy as possible. Now, ironically, this argument comes from both, you know, vegan, plant-based, high-carb end of the spectrum, as well as keto, low-carb, you know, carnivore crew as well. They all kind of argue that theirs is, you know, the most healthiest thing that you could possibly do. I did look into the research a, a little bit on this. There was a meta-analysis back in 2014 uh, by Noud et al., where they um, looked at studies that equated calories but varied the carbohydrate and fat content. And they found that basically uh, 95 to 99% of the health benefits from those diets could simply be explained by the weight loss. I'll say it again. 95 to 99% of the health benefits of, of different diets are due to weight loss. We also have several studies that show that metabolic ward tightly controlled circumstances, low carb versus low fat, if protein and calories are equated, produce the same fat loss. And further, we have longitudinal data looking at long-term outcomes showing that on the whole, uh, low carb or low fat don't really produce any differences in adherence. Both are pretty poor, uh, honestly, as are all diets over the long term. What they do show is that for people who are able to adhere, that is people who are the most adherent to whatever particular diet they pick, they lose the most weight. So just tying this logic together, if most of the health benefits from dieting are from the weight loss, then we should choose a diet that produces the most long-term weight loss. The most long-term weight loss is produced by the diet someone could best adhere to, and there doesn't seem to be significant metabolic advantages between diets as long as we equate protein and calories. It's important to equate protein because protein is more thermogenic than carbohydrate or fat. Now getting back to that, still people will argue with me um, about this sort of thing. I actually came across a paper, it's not new, it's from 2012, where they looked at breast cancer survivors uh, and they wanted to examine the effects on either a high carb diet or a low carb diet, both diets being low calorie. So they examined uh, 50 people in each group for six months, 1200 calories a day. Uh, one group was low fat, high carb. They were about um, 24 grams of fat, almost 200 grams of carbohydrate. I think both groups were around 65 grams of protein. And then the low carb group was around 100 grams of carbohydrate and I think like 65 grams of fat. So they looked at them over the long term. Um, they lost the, you know, on the whole, both groups lost the same amount of weight. Uh, adherence varied. But for people who were the most adherent and lost the most weight, basically what they showed was that cholesterol, blood glucose, and most markers of blood lipids and cardiovascular help basically linearly improved with weight loss. Cholesterol and LDL improved a little bit more with the low fat diet. Triglycerides and HDL improved a little bit more with the low carb diet. When you summarize it all together, uh, doesn't seem to be much difference in terms of the health outcomes on blood lipids between these two diets. So, what does this all mean? What this all means is the best diet for you, as I've been saying for, I don't know, 10 years. The best diet for you in terms of what you can be the most healthy with is the one that you can stick to. And the best news ever is that if you get enough protein, eat enough fiber, and eat the appropriate amount of calories, you can do whatever the hell you want with your carbohydrates and fats. Even looking at stuff like uh, inflammation. Not different when people lose the same amount of weight. 
regardless of low fat or low carb or anything in between. You lose the same amount of weight, you'll have the same reduction in inflammation. Does it make for hot topics and zealotism, but it does make for really effective knowledge if you know how to implement it. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, press the like button, subscribe, go check out our new app on iOS and Android, Carbon Diet Coach. It was designed by myself, Holly, and registered dietitian Keith Crocker. $9.99 per month for customized nutrition coaching that adapts to you and your metabolism. You can't beat it. Go check it out. I'll catch you guys next week.